Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3 and in this episode we begin with Jove Port 1 which is going to make orbit around Jupiter. We have two Jovian demons which are tugs for Jupiter, nuclear tugs, and hopefully those will be able to bring this into a usable orbit, maybe, uh, or we could uh, keep them on standby for some other purpose. Uh, at this point, oh, as we see a little transit of one of the moons of Jupiter, I guess that's Io. Can't really see because it's so shadowy. But um, we don't really have the Jupiter low low orbit contract anymore. That expired. All we have left is a Neptune flyby and a Pluto flyby, really. So we're just going to get this in an arbitrary orbit. And maybe we should get it into orbit around one of the moons of Jupiter, but it is pretty heavy. It has some internal delta V. I don't know how much the Jovian demons can really help it out. Uh, but we can try that. You can see that technology-wise, we're going to be completing high energy, sorry, high efficiency nuclear propulsion. This is a bit high, though our relative inclination to one of the moons is only 1.9 degrees, so can't be that bad, right? Yeah, it looks pretty good as far as the inclination with respect to the moons is concerned. It's just that Jupiter is sort of tilted. We have ignition. I don't think this node had a correction built in, though it seems to be a little bit radial from retrograde and I don't know why. I mean we are one minute from the node, but still. That's pretty radial for just one minute from the node. Due to the fact that we've been quite heavy, we didn't pack much food, water, and oxygen. We packed a trivial amount. So we would have to send that over separately. And we'd have to send a lot of it, of course. Any stay around Jupiter is going to be a long stay. Well, not really. Um, basically, there'd be a trip back every year. So actually, it's not as bad as Mars. I mean, it's actually the trip to Jupiter and the trip back that take a lot of food, water, and oxygen. It's not the stay around Jupiter that does. Which is good, because, you know, staying around Jupiter for a long time is not great for the health as far as radiation is concerned. Um, no, I want it lower than 60 days. Let's say a 48 day orbit. And what that looks like is still pretty high, way above Callisto's orbit, you can see. But uh, we can work with that. And it's important to give ourselves some room to adjust at apoapsis if we need to match inclinations with the Jovian demons or something like that. So, without further ado, we'll jump to the Jovian Demons and have them do what they need to do in order to rendezvous with this. We can really only have one of them pushing this at a time because it's only got one port at this end. These other ports, of course, would be imbalanced if we tried to dock them to it and have them push it like that. So, yeah. Anyway, to Jovian Demon 2. Okay, so here we have Jovian Demon 2 with its 40 kilonewton nuclear engine, uh, so a sort of smaller Nerva. And fortunately, this one has infinite ignitions, as opposed to, for some reason, the Nerva's limited 60. And of course, we have a boil off controlled tank, otherwise, there's no way we could uh, carry liquid hydrogen all the way out here. It had to use quite a lot of its liquid hydrogen already. And the thing to remember about this is it's got hydrogen gas thrusters but those operate at like a quarter of the ISP of the main engine so if we uh, this Delta V will go away very fast when we use the RCS we want to avoid that as much as possible it's got bonus RTGs on it just in case but really those were just to counterbalance the antenna on the other side and considering the cost of the nuclear engines slapping on two extra RTGs didn't really make that much of a difference so, and if you gotta send something out to Jupiter, you might as well bite the cost. So, anyway, as we see another one of the moons of Jupiter's floating right by. And it's an interesting thing about this engine, this solid core nuclear engine, that for some reason it always makes its sound, even when it's not actually uh, on or providing thrust. It's not provi uh, doing all of its sound, it's just doing this sort of background sound. Don't know what that's about, but... It is a good engine, so we'll take that quirk. Oh, uh, we have some overheating. Uh, 
but we're going away from Jupiter. Hopefully that'll cool down. I don't know, maybe we're just a little bit too close to Jupiter? We're out of its atmosphere, but I don't know, we're just getting an overheating indicator for some reason. There's no real waste heat buildup. These have plenty of cooling. We're still overheating on the tank. We'll see what we have to do about that. And it's still not really giving me the greatest indication of how I might approach the target, huh? I mean, I don't know if I should line up the two purple markers. I don't know. I don't actually want to meet up with the target mission down here because it's got to be tough to correct the radial difference. And it's not really even showing me the marker like that. So try to make an intersect point there. But that, that won't be any good because we'll be going in very opposite directions like that. This is just not a very good situation, to be honest. Yeah, uh, the maneuver node system is just not playing nice with me. I'll take this maneuver for now. And I think it's the next thing we're going to do, because the Jovian Demon, the other Jovian Demon, is not coming in for 58 days. So we'll just do this, and we'll see if it works at all. And we'll also see if our tank blows up. Nope, but uh, it cooled down during time warp, or at least it seems to. I think it was just proximity to Jupiter, which we will soon fix. Okay, well, close approach distance is coming down over there. Let me keep an eye on that then. That's still a long ways off though. Let me just estimate how much it's going to take to match orbits. Uh, about a thousand. That's not too bad, as long as we can do it at the right time. Alright, we'll do that. Even though it costs a lot, this is practice. We are going nowhere near Jupiter this time, 163,000 kilometers, so we shouldn't heat up, right? No, I'm not gonna double check that. I'm just gonna assume. Looks fine to me. Oh, right, the other Jovian Demon. Okay, well, let's put this alarm on. Heat management systems, very important. Okay, let's go to the other one and see what's going on with that. Okay, this is a correction maneuver, but is it a good correction maneuver? Let's find out, because now we have a different sort of target. We've got a target that's in orbit around Jupiter. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's helping anything. Okay, well actually it is flattening our orbit. It's got the same sort of wrong radial position situation as the other Jovian Demon, and that's because they were both launched at the same time. Similar to what I had to do with the, the missions in the shuttle-constructed Mars mission, as far as rendezvousing with a high eccentricity target around another planet or moon. There, oh, there's an actual intersect building there. Uh, but how much is it going to cost there? Uh, not too bad actually. This is working out much better, but it's going to take a few corrections. And then we have 1,200 to burn off once we get there. But can we make this intersect happen? It's still 87,000 kilometers away right now. Well, there's no way we're going to do this burn correctly to this kind of efficient, uh, accuracy and even to a hundredth of a meter per second I get a separation of 3,000 kilometers. Oh, it looked like we have uh, 8,800 meters per second rather than whatever I was reading before. Interesting. The capture burn is weird. We're, we're nowhere near Jupiter here. We're closer to Io really and um, the burn is occurring nowhere near periapsis either in order to make this whole rendezvous thing happen. But it ends up being cheaper than what we're doing with the other mission. So I dub this now first Jovian Demon. <laughs> By the time we get to the station we're not going to have too much spare Delta V, huh? Well, there's a nice close approach distance shaping up. Okay, well, close approach distance is still going down, so I'm gonna try and pursue that. 
at least as long as my periapsis isn't dipping into the atmosphere. I think I better stop it right there. But it's only MechJeb showing me the details of that. I'm not getting any such encounter information from the map view here. Well, we'll just do some sort of maneuver at periapsis and see what works. Okay, here we are with the second Jovian Demon again, but this time it is finally capturing into orbit around Jupiter uh, from a fairly high location and not at periapsis. And so, we're going to rename it. Oh, I had said it was 40 kilonewtons. I was wrong. It was 80. 80 kilonewtons. Something else must have been 40 kilonewtons that got stuck in my head. Oh, but it still shows us getting flung out, but that's fine. We'll... We'll be capturing over here then. <laughs> We've got a Ganymede encounter. That's good, but not what we need right now. Okay, I think that's about what we were trying to do. Though it'd also be nice to correct the inclination. Okay, let's do that as sort of a phasing thing. And we'll be doing this first. So, right around Jupiter we go. Still on escape as far as the map view is concerned. Okay, that's a minimum on the relative inclination. Our periapsis is safe, important to check that. And we need to phase with the target now. I don't know if that's even an encounter. But anyway, in principle, eventually we'll have to bring our orbit down, so it doesn't matter when exactly or how much, we'll figure that out at the time. So, yep, uh, we just need to add that alarm in 43 days. Let's try and at least get the first Jovian Demon there. With our luck, I mean, the first Jovian Demon will have to do something with the station and perhaps even get it on a trajectory close to another moon, so this whole setup might be completely different by that time. We'll see. Okay, well, I've plotted a sequence of two maneuvers, 30 meters per second and 32 over here. That gets us an intersect at 2,000 kilometers. But the relative speed is 1,200 meters per second, which doesn't make too much sense. So it must be just uh, measuring it wrong. Because, you know, it's only taking 30 meters per second to get us from this orbit to this orbit. Oh, sorry, from this orbit, this uh, apoapsis to that purple one. And if that takes 30 meters per second, it should not take 1,200 to bring it back down to the target orbit, which is the yellow one. But, yeah. Anyway, we'll have to find out. So let's do these two things. So this is all about rendezvousing stuff in orbit around Jupiter without getting into low Jupiter orbit. So, welcome. Um, this is the job for today. I didn't realize ahead of time that, no, that was totally off. Didn't realize ahead of time that this is going to be what this episode is about, but that's what this episode is about. Yeah, I think we'll try and meet up with it up, up here instead of close to Jupiter, because any sort of radial or inclination correction close to Jupiter is going to be tough. Okay, I've handled a couple of burns away from the camera, if you will, very small ones. And we've got another small one here, but this one finally gets us an encounter with uh, the first Jovian Demon and our uh, spaceport. So that's 41.8 meters per second, and will get us to a separation of 20 kilometers with a relative speed of 200 and, oh, sorry, 127.3 meters per second, which is reasonable. If you want to see how precise this has to be, though, it, it's pretty darn precise. Uh, one second difference gets us 4,000 kilometers off, and forget about the relative speed. And uh, see this last digit, the fifth digit, past the decimal point on the prograde vector? Let's say I take that off and update. That tosses us about 35 kilometers off. So probably we're not going to get that encounter precisely. <laughs> Um, we're gonna have to do some more work, but at least we've got something. So the maneuver is in five days and the encounter is in 59, so we can just go straight for this maneuver right now. There's no way I'm doing that properly though. Yeah, I mean, just, just, just no way we can get this exactly right. 
Ooh, kilometers. Oh, I missed it. Oh, okay, 100 kilometers. I'll take that for now, considering it's changing without me actually using RCS. So, okay, well, ahead of that encounter in 54 days, we'll have to make a little maneuver. Yep, that maneuver is changing all on its own. Okay, add an alarm. All right, let's see what the second Jovian Demon can do. This one is going to encounter the target. Relative speed only 99.3 kilometers, uh, sorry, 99.3 meters per second. But uh, the separation is up more than 100 kilometers, so that's a problem. Hopefully we can do something over here to fix that. Maybe we should make that a little bit earlier to give us some more leverage. I've actually decided that the second Jovian Demon can just hold off until we've resolved this because the first Jovian Demon is obviously getting to the target first and we can have it do its job as much as possible before bringing in the second one. 151 meters per second difference. Okay, within one kilometer. We'll have Joveport 1 do the docking maneuvers because its RCS thrusters are actually more efficient than the hydro gas ones on here. Oh, wait. Wow. Okay, these space rendezvous are tough because the target just sort of disappears. What? It totally jumped from one side of me to the other side of me. I swear. Hmm, not all of our resources are showing up here. There's a uh, potential issue here because obviously there should be NTO somewhere on that list and of course a stage only selection. Okay, we're finally coming into dock though. There's a lot of wigglies with smart ASS. Uh, it says I'm way off, but it's not right about that. And we have connection. Okay, well first thing we want to do is we don't need this using its RCS. So I'm actually going to manually disable these RCS ports. They're just inefficient. And let's control from here. And we see we have 2458 but I'm gonna switch off these Gemini lander engines. And that's going to change a bit. Because then the nuclear engine has to push it completely instead of uh, the fuel here draining. In retrospect, maybe we should have used up that fuel in the first place, but anyway. That gives us 1,135 with the nuclear engine. So we have to decide what we want to do with that. I think Ganymede maybe? Or Europa? Let's see. We need to lift our orbit up to one of something that can sort of bring us down. Oh, it's not letting me make a node. Okay. Well, it's not showing me all of my resources either, so let me go back to the tracking station and come back. Alright, so what we have is an encounter with Europa, and it's not the best encounter. Obviously, we would like an encounter over here, but we're not high enough above Jupiter to get an encounter over here. Uh, it's going to cost us 360 meters per second, maneuver in 22 days. It doesn't do a whole lot. Brings our orbit from there to there. I mean, it's an improvement but it's not much of an improvement. We really need to encounter something on this side, hopefully IO. So I've got IO targeted, but we've got a 1.4 degree inclination uh, difference there. So right now we've got a 1.9. Europe is helping us out with that, but yep. Okay, let's just do this. It's gonna be tough. It's going to be tough to get uh, this mission, the station, into orbit around one of the moons. Even with the two tugs and everything. There is the matter of how we're going to, you know, reuse these tugs in an efficient way. 
And right now I don't know, and since we're going to be moving on to Mars colonization, they're just going to be hanging out for an extended period of time. Okay, well, that should be close. Let's see. Well, we certainly have an encounter. Is it the encounter we want? It brings us down a bit. I think passing by... Whoa, that's getting a little bit too close. Um, let's go for 100 kilometers. All right. So, passing by Europa. We don't have anything else pressing to do. Okay, where is Europa? Should be... Oh, there it is. So, 19 ton vessel here. First time I've passed by Europa with something quite this heavy. And we're not gonna dawdle. I don't have any science to do here anyway. Woo, it looks awful close. <laughs> and off we go again. So now maybe we can finagle something with IO. Oh, it's very choppy. I just restarted after that glitch with the stuff there. I decided to restart instead of go to the tracking station only but it doesn't seem to help too much well that's tantalizing but not quite there is it okay there's an IO encounter another 360 meter per second burn and that does pull our orbit down better not as much as I need, but better. I needed an indication of my inclination afterwards. 0.8 with respect to Europa seems good for the first pass around Io. Well, we can get a 0.3 degree inclination difference. Okay, Io encounter. We're not slowing down. <laughs> We're passing right by. Hold on to your hats. All right, well, I need to plot for another IO encounter. And let's target IO again now, now that we've passed it. Doesn't look like, well, no, that's our current situation, so it's lying. Okay. Oh, and we've got still a 0.7 degree difference between us and IO. It was 0.3 with Europa, but 0.7 with IO. Okay, let me do some plotting. Okay, it's going to be just a 53 meter per second burn this time in order to encounter IO. Now, of course, our burns are getting closer together because our orbital period is going down with each pass. Okay, just getting as close as possible to maximize the influence of Io here. I think I'll take 72 kilometers, should be dramatic enough. And hopefully as we go equatorial around Io, it'll flatten our inclination with respect to it. We'll see. One thing it can't really do is raise our periapsis very much. It can bring down our apoapsis, but not really raise our periapsis much. We have to do that on our own. Or with one of the other moons. Squiggly line. And here we go. Dramatic flyby of Io again, 72 kilometers. I'll just keep the time warp up, and there we go. Clear. Okay, well this plot seems to be a bad idea, but basically we're aiming for a Ganymede encounter. That's going to lift our periapsis up. Remember, uh, we don't really get much help 
uh, from IO with that. So it's going to lift our periapsis up and also set us on an encounter with IO. Currently a high encounter, that's not very good. But of course, when it when Ganymede boosts our periapsis, it also boosts our apoapsis. So we're going to need IO to bring that back down again. But it only costs 21.4 meters per second, and I like double moon flybys, so we'll we'll try it. It's only a high flyby of Ganymede, 546 kilometers right now. Um, though Ganymede is big, so 546 kilometers still looks pretty close. Hmm. I don't know if I can... Uh, see, it's very sensitive. So I can't really get close to Io right now. Maybe if I change the timing of it, but again, this is all very finicky. That seems to be a minimum. Alright, well, anyway, we'll go with this. It's fancy. Almost NASA-like kind of thing. Not quite. But we have aspirations. So this is not the encounter occasion. We have to do the burn first. We'll worry about IO after we encounter Ganymede. It's probably for the best. Yeah, that's pretty close, 18,000 kilometers. We'll we'll figure that out. There'll buy, probably be a couple of Delta V here and there. Improved solids are complete. <laughs> I'm just filling in some of the gaps in the tech tree. There it is, yeah, yeah. From a distance, it sort of looks like Pluto. Okay, not quite as dramatic as the flybys of Io, but still. We did the thing. And let's adjust our course. Unfortunately, the correction burn is costing more than I thought, 40 meters per second, but it does get us into a nice lower orbit and we will still have our higher periapsis almost at the level of Io's orbit, so that'll be good. And we're actually already past the node, darn it. Okay, 0.2 meter per second off, and we have an encounter. Okay, stop there. 59 kilometers. Is that safe? I think it's safe. And it'll get us into this purple orbit. Alright, one more time. I think that'll do it for this episode. I've flown around Jupiter enough today. <laughs> I think I think I've done enough of this. We even docked around Jupiter. It's been a lot. Been a bit tedious, but revolutionary in its way. Actually, our resulting orbit brings us in a bit. That's not great. Okay, our closest flyby of Io yet. Oh, dark side. No fun. Well, in the next video, we'll have more of these flybys, but hopefully we'll get to this Uranus ambassador, which will finally be arriving at the SOI of Uranus, but... Of course, that's not the periapsis of Uranus. That probably takes another few weeks or so. So we'll have to wait on that. But at least we'll get it to its destination and maybe figure out whether it can go to somewhere else like Neptune. Not sure. Because the Neptune flyby contract is going to run out before anything else is going to get to Neptune. It's probably our best bet. But I don't know if it's really aimed for it or not. Probably has a lot of Delta V though. So we'll check it out. Anyway, but... Our main goal will still be to try and get this little haphazard station and its RTGs into orbit around one of the moons of Jupiter. And I haven't forgotten about our other tug which has been hanging out. It's still in this high orbit there, second Jovian demon. We've, we've been cycling around, getting into a lower orbit all this time. It's been hanging out in the high orbit. I don't know if it's going to be able to get in on this business, hopefully, but we'll see. Alright, so on that note... Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.